The Garden is an open, inclusive, Christ-like community where people from many paths gather to explore, engage, and seek inspiration to transform our world through the unconditional love of God. Explore. Engage. Inspire. We're glad you're here. Good morning, gardeners. It's good to be with you today. Hey, just a quick reminder, today we're having communion. I want to encourage you to go find a little bit to drink, coffee, juice, it doesn't matter, bread, donut, grab that, and at the end of the sermon, we'll have communion. A reminder, our communion table is open to all people. Another thing I'd like to highlight is this week, please look in your email for a survey, a survey through SurveyMonkey, we have put together, the GLT has put together a survey to help us explore how to best proceed uh, in the very near future and maybe thinking ahead a little further. So please take some time to fill that out. If you're not one to fill out surveys online, that's no problem. Give us a call in the office and we'll either mail you one, snail mail, or we'll be happy to help you fill it out over the phone. Welcome to the garden. We're in this together, friends, and we're really glad you're here. That was fantastic. We're so glad to be in worship today where we're living life together.
Stepping Stones message for kids. I hope all of you have been safe and well at home. And I know while you're at home, some of you have probably been having to do your schoolwork with your parents. And even though you're working with your parents and not your teachers, I'm pretty sure that most of you know that one plus one equals two. But did you know that sometimes one plus one can equal three? Now, I didn't fail first grade math. Let me explain to you what I mean. In the Bible, there's a story that tells us that when Jesus was meeting with his disciples or his followers, he said to them that whenever two or more of them were gathered in his name, then he would be with them. So what that kind of means is that you have one person and one person here. But when those two people get together, Jesus is with them. So really you have one, two, three people. Now I know if you're like me, probably you've been feeling a little bit distant from everybody at church and maybe I uh, haven't felt a part of things. I miss my, all of you at Stepping Stones and in Messy Church. But when we're online together, Jesus is with us. He's re he, he is with us and we're a part of his family. And there are other things that you probably do that where Jesus is with you too. If your family has done things like making chalkboard drawings on your driveway so that people can see pretty something pretty when they drive by, or some of our neighbors put teddy bears in their windows so we could do a teddy bear hunt when we were driving through their neighborhoods. Or maybe you've made masks or done some other things together. Or maybe you just get together for a prayer in the evenings before meals with your family. All, in all those places, Jesus is with you. And he, even though we can't be together, he's with us right now as we do this lesson. I hope all of you continue to stay safe and well. If you're taking a test with your teacher, please do 1 plus 1 is 2, not 1 plus 1 is 3. Mm -hmm. And hopefully I'll see you again soon. Uh, let's have a little prayer if we could. Jesus, thank you for bringing us together today. Thank you for always being with us. Help us to have kind hearts and kind thoughts in the weeks to come. Amen. Hey friends, this next song is a reminder that we are indeed better together. Combination of words I could put on the back of a postcard No song that I can sing but I can try for your heart Our dreams and they are made out of real things Like a shoebox of photographs with sepia tone loving Love is the answer at least for most of the questions in my heart Like why are we here and where do we go and how come it's so hard It's not always easy and sometimes life can be deceiving I'll tell you one thing, it's always better when we're together It's always better when we're together Yeah, we'll look at the stars when we're together Well, it's always better when we're together Yeah, it's always better when we're together But I know that they'll be gone When the morning light sings and brings new things For tomorrow night you see That they'll be gone too Too many things I had to do But if all of these dreams might find their way Into my day to day scene I'd be under the impression I was somewhere in between With only two, just me and you Now so many things we got to do or places we got to be Was we'll it beneath the mango tree now? Yeah, it's always better when we're together Memories 
Labyrinth walking is an ancient practice used by many different faiths for spiritual centering, contemplation, and prayer. Entering the serpentine path of a labyrinth, you walk slowly while quieting your mind and focusing on a spiritual question or prayer. A labyrinth is not a maze. It has only one path to the center and back out. The path twists and turns back on itself many times before reaching the center. Once at the center, there is only one way back out. In this way, the labyrinth symbolizes a journey to a predetermined destination or the journey through life from birth to spiritual awakening to death. Labyrinths are used in many religious cultures, including Greek, Hindu, and Hopi, and are also often found on church grounds and spiritual retreat centers like this one that I walked at Our Lady of Grace Monastery in Indianapolis. Creator is listening. 
unsafe in the world, judged by the world, scared of this world. Throughout these last few months, people around the world have been quarantined in their homes and communities. First responders on the front lines of COVID-19 have had to stay away from their families. They care for us, yet have to stay far away from those that care for them. Companies have lost productivity, and some have even had to close permanently. We have had to stay apart, often from those we love and share life with, to keep each other safe. Then came the senseless death of George Floyd on May 25th ensuing chaos since then. Those who should be protecting us and serving rightful justice took advantage of their power. Here in Indianapolis, people are hurt, upset, and some are using violence as a way of being hurt. We feel apart from one another, with the gap of racism feeling too big to traverse. Yet we know that you are a God of love and mercy. We know that you want only good for us and that you want us to be in this together. We are praying to you today because we cannot fix this on our own. We cannot be independently ignorant to the world around us. We cannot pretend color does not exist. Only through your love and your grace can we find ways to be better together. We pray that when the time comes in our lives when COVID-19 is no longer a threat, that we can come together and love. We pray that when we are presented with those of all different colors, that we can honor and celebrate them. Most of all, we pray that pray that through this turmoil, we can come together to show your love so beautifully that our world will be better than we could ever imagine. Amen. The New York Times uh, hosts a podcast called The Argument. Not long ago, one of the co-hosts, Michelle Goldberg, said something that has helped to put the first five months of this year into perspective. She said that 2020 started off like 1974, an impeachment crisis, quickly became 1918, a pandemic, turned into 1929, an economic crash, and now it's 1968, massive urban unrest. So true, isn't it? I mean, we've been tossed to and fro, and just when you think, what next? Well, what and next happen, and it's usually beyond our wildest imaginations, our limited perspective. In some ways, I wonder if that's how the disciples felt about this same time of year. I mean, their world was pretty much turned upside down. Jesus, their teacher for about three years and leader, the one who gave them purpose and meaning in life, a direction, a job, well, he had been crucified, he was resurrected, and now he's ascended to heaven. He has left the building. The only instruction he provided them was, before he took off, was he told them to stay indoors until they received the next sign, and then, well, he disappeared. Even with these instructions from Jesus, they were still a bit freaked out. I mean, they were still concerned about their own well-being, the retribution of religious leaders and the government, and they had no idea what would come next. So they made their way to Jerusalem, back to the upper room, where they huddled together in one place, waiting, without a teacher, alone, afraid, confused, and not at all clear about what the future would hold for them. That was, until there was, Scripture tells us, suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. It was as if the Spirit of God came among the people of God in a way that helped them to overcome the fear and confusion of the moment 
and to step out into the world driven solely by the Spirit of God. They were given what, what's named as a language that they could all understand and they went out into the world and became this thing we call the church. What I love is they were transformed and changed by the Spirit in ways that people did not understand. And in fact, their behavior was just so odd that people accused them of being drunk. But these observations, well, they did not dissuade them. They continued their journey using this common language, sharing in fellowship and communion. What I love is scripture tells us they added to their numbers and they would break bread in their homes and eat together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of the people. Daily, God would add to their number until the garden. I share the Pentecost story today because I believe it is a story that can speak to us today. At the time of Pentecost, people were afraid, not just the followers of Jesus, but people were afraid and mistrusting of one another. It's described as people from different cultures with different languages. Today, I believe we too are a nation of people who are afraid and misunderstanding of one another. For example, we're afraid of a virus we cannot see. We're afraid of the violence erupting in our streets. We're also afraid because we're not all speaking the same language. I mean, we're not all from the same ethnic, social, economic backgrounds. And the language is not common. And there are so many different languages being spoken. For example, there are lots of different languages right in COVID. The language is varied, and I'm going to point out three. There is the language of those who are genuinely fearful of what the future holds, and they're protecting themselves. People with pre-existing conditions and people over the age of 65. There are those who have not been out of their home since March. There are those who have been separated from the people they love and they're away from one another. People in care facilities not being able to see the families they love. There are those that are not planning on venturing out into the world until we have a vaccine. Then there is this other COVID language. That is, there is no reason why we are at home washing the groceries when we bring them home. There is no need for masks. There is the feeling that if we would only start living our lives again, we would be able to get this virus managed. The time has come for us to stop talking about curves and how we can manage them and start our economy up so we can get the country moving in the right direction. There is another COVID language. This one's just kind of confusing. Those of us who have no idea what we think and are just trying to take it one day at a time. Perhaps you can't identify with these three COVID languages I've named here today. I'm sure there are many others, different dialects that I don't even know about. The point that I'm trying to make is, if you are speaking one language, it is often very hard to comprehend another language. If your language or position is different, well, then it's easy for me to disregard you and your language. We are a nation where it's now my language, and my language is the right language, and, well, your language is the wrong language. If that's where you are today, a right and wrong scenario, then chances are you are not speaking the language guided by the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit language. That is, you are speaking in ways that you are convinced that it is your way or the highway. When that happens, the Spirit is silent. Through Pentecost, we have the ability to find a common language where the Spirit is the guide. And all that follows is a language of love, the language of God. We often get confused when it comes to topics where there are differing opinions. We start to think either or, I'm right and you're wrong. But that can't be of God, because God would not be in conflict with God. Now stay with me here. That is, the God being in me and the God being in you, that is, the God being that we were gifted at Pentecost, can only connect on a spiritual level. Then and only then can God's voice take the lead. 
And it is this kind of conversation, my friend, that God is seeking from us now, a conversation that takes time and discernment, and it makes all things possible through the gift of the Holy Spirit. Another language we're challenged by right now is the language that we learned growing up. And it's a common language. We speak it in our families and in our neighborhoods. We assume that this is the language we all speak, but alas, we know that is not the case. We get that when we go to different countries, right? Where we see people speaking different languages. We get it and most often we celebrate those differences because we come from different places. Yet because we all live in the same country, we assume we speak the same language. But the truth is, we're not speaking the same language. Even when it sounds like English, it's different. What is happening in our country now is evidence that we're not speaking the same language. The brutal death of George Floyd at the hands of a white police officer and his fellow policemen tells me we are not speaking the same language. When I see a police car and believe that there is a place of help and safety while my African-American brothers and sisters are fearful, well then we are not speaking a same common language. When this country was founded some 243 years ago, the language did not provide the same rights to all people. And in fact, three-fifths personhood was granted to slaves not for themselves, but that their owners could have some power in the voting system. We must be mindful, friends. We are not speaking the same language. When I am in the safety and security of my home, and there are others who need so desperately to be heard that peaceful demonstrations become violent riots, then we are not speaking the same language. When someone on Facebook tells an immigrant to go home after he shares a post that the other disagrees with, then we're not speaking the same language. Gardeners, the truth about life is, is that we are a country that has not found a spiritual language of God. And what we are called to do is to step out of the safety and fear of our homemade language and find the language of the Spirit, the language created by God, guided by God, given by the Spirit. A language that brings forth the God in me being and the God in you being. Then and only then will we find the truth that will set us free. Reverend William Barber is the founder of the Poor People's Movement. And he said this this past week. He said, the language we're hearing today comes when there is trauma. The protest and violence following the death of George Floyd are public warning that comes with trauma. He goes on to say, America must listen to the protest in the streets if it is ever to heal the wounds caused by both police and policy brutality. People must refuse to be comforted too quickly about the deaths of black people at the hands of white police officers, about the deaths of black people dying at higher rates because of COVID-19, because they have lack of resources. Black and brown people are disproportionately put into lower paying jobs. They do not have the same educational opportunities, the same health and health care resources. These are just a few of the things. I don't know about you, but I don't like to hear that kind of language. And my first inclination is to say, I have not caused any wounds. I haven't hurt anybody. I love everybody. But see, if I say that, then that's me talking, and I'm not leaving room for God, and that is the God in me, to find the God in Reverend Barber, one whose life and upbringing look very different than my own. I must 
all white people, must learn a language that opens our minds and hearts to a reality we don't want to face. And to face the future realizing that we will not be the same. I believe that God is calling us out of our comfort zones to have the difficult conversations. Conversations so difficult that people think we're crazy and drunk. God's saying, it's time to have a conversation. White mothers of teenage boys must find ways to listen to the fears of black mothers afraid when their teenage sons go out for an evening with friends. Jeff Bezos needs to find a common language with his Hispanic worker who's busting her buns to make sure she can fulfill his two-day shipping promise. The pastor on the north side needs to find a language to talk to the pastor on the east side. Democrats need to talk to Republicans. We need to find a language. You, you get what I'm talking about here. Friends, when people talk with God at the center, amazing things can happen. Right now, black, white, brown, Asian, gay, straight, Christian, Jews, Muslims, all of these people are finding a common language, speaking the language of the Spirit, a spirit for all people in all places. They are no longer silent. They're marching and they're coming together to seek change and to change the profile of this nation. Oh, you've heard it a lot over the past 10 weeks. We're all in this together. Even when we're apart, we're together. I wish that were true. And it can be true. John Wesley once said, we may not think alike, but we can all love alike. And when we think using our hearts, then we can indeed find a common language of love on the other side of this struggle. That's the place when you don't understand yourself, but you clearly understand God. Ask for God to fill you with this spirit and this language. And I believe that God will say, get out of the way, here we go. Today we're sharing in Holy Communion a reminder that wherever two or three are gathered in the Spirit of Christ, Christ is among you. We remember the scripture where we're reminded it's in the breaking of bread that Jesus makes his presence known. Today as we come to this communion table, if you come here being certain then you are right, well, ask Jesus for a language, a language beyond your understanding. Ask Jesus for a spirit language and a language of love. As you come to the communion table right now, and think for just a moment. Where is there chaos and confusion in your life? Who is it that you're speaking to in anger or not speaking to at all? This is the place where you ask for a common language with the challenges you're facing. As you share in the feast, name those folks right now. And Jesus indeed will give you the spirit of forgiveness and a language to move forth in life loving everyone. As you come to this communion table, ask Jesus to show you who you need to talk to. Ask Jesus to guide you where you can bring the spirit of love. For in this me meal, Jesus is saying, come now, I am ready to take over and to give you a language of love. All who are here, who are truly seeking the language of love found in Jesus Christ are welcome to share in the Feast of Holy Communion. You do not have to be a part of the United Methodist Church. You do not have to be part of the Garden or any church. You need only seek and believe in a love that passes our understanding. Communion represents the love of Christ in this world. In sharing in this feast, you will proclaim again the love of Christ love enough for you and all humanity. You are gifted with forgiveness in this feast and a new beginning, a new language. You are welcome here. For on the night which Jesus was betrayed, he gathered with his disciples in a large upper room. He took bread and lifted it to heaven and gave thanks to God and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples. He said, take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. As often as you eat, remember me and my love for you. Jesus also took the cup, lifted it to heaven, and gave thanks to God. 
Then he gave it to his disciples. He gave it to his friends and said, Take and drink of this, all of you. This is my blood poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. For these gifts, let us pray. Holy God, we do not presume to come to this your holy table, trusting in our own love and mercy, but indeed in yours alone. We ask that you open our minds and hearts in this meal to a new language, a language where there is no darkness nor sin, but a new beginning. Give us the courage in this feast to name that which we can no longer bear, turn it over to you, and seek the language of love. In the name of Jesus our Christ, amen. The body of Christ given for you. the cup of Christ, the cup of blood, the cup of forgiveness, the cup of a new language, the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Take and drink. Through the power of the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, you have been given a new language. Your sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. You, my friends, have been granted a new language, a language of God, a language of the Spirit. Go forth and seek to share in conversation and be happy together. About the ones you love To hold them tight So happy together If I should call you up And test a dime And you say you are well Then you will ease my mind Imagine how the world could be So very fine So happy together Go now in peace, my friends, and may the love of God be yours, today, tomorrow, and forevermore. Amen.
No combination of words I could put on the back of a postcard. No song that I can sing, but I can try for your heart. Our dreams, and they are made out of real things, like a shoebox of photographs with sepia tone loving. Love is the answer, at least, for most of the questions in my heart, like why are we here and where do we go and how come it's so hard? It's not always easy and sometimes life can be deceiving. I'll tell you one thing: it's always better when we're together. It's always better when we're together. Yeah, we'll look at the stars when we're together. Well, it's always better when we're But I know that they'll be gone when the morning light sings and brings new things. For tomorrow night, you see that they'll be gone too. Too many things I had to do. But if all of these dreams might find their way into my day-to-day scene, I'd be under the impression I was somewhere in between, with only two, just me and you. Now so many things we got to do. Or places we got to be. We'll sit beneath the mango tree now. Yeah, it's always better.